Hi, this is part two of our series with the Artistic Edge Digital Cutter. Earlier we worked with this same graphic and we were cutting vinyl, um, or you could cut it out of fabric. Now I'm going to show you how to use crystals. So I have my graphic and I did turn on in techniques. I did turn on the cut we were using before and I have crystals turned on. And when you turn on crystals, even if you don't have a graphic in here, you get the crystal shape over here. So you can add crystals or make a little crystal design just by clicking on your um, mat here. But we're going to work with our per part first and then I'll show you how to add those crystals. So here we're going to click on our outline. I can come over here. I'm in outline in my properties. I'm going to click on crystals and it fills it right there with crystals. Now when I look at this I do have to do a bit of editing. You want to remember too when you're working with your graphics as I mentioned before to always look at edit nodes first before you get going because if there's a lot of nodes it's going to affect how things look as you go along. So I can see in here I have some crystals that are, have red X's and some have yellow. The red ones are crystals that are on top of each other and they're going to cut like a little double hole here which we might not want. So when I try to click on that to fix it I cannot click on individual ones and move them. So I have to come over here to my properties and in my properties before I do a lot of editing I could change the spacing if I wanted right here. Um, I could change the offset crystal size, the crystal color. I would want to do any of that first before I went and individually moved any of my crystals. Once I'm decided, oh yes, I want to go down to the little parts and do all the little crystals, that's what I need to do now, I'm going to click on separate to crystals and then I can right click on here and ungroup. Now when I click off of here, when I click on these, each one of my crystals is loose now and, in, and an individual. So I can use my mouse or my keyboard controls to move them around. I can select them and delete the ones I don't want. So I'm going to delete some of these. On these two here, they're just too close together so I'm going to move it apart. And over here I'm going to delete one of these and see what happens and that took care of all of that. Now when I get to this point, if I want to add a crystal, I can come over here to crystal shape and then I could just pop in here and I could put one right there. That worked out okay. Or maybe I want to make a little uh, decoration here so I could put crystals along in here if I wanted. And of course if I put them too close together I'll have to go back and edit those. That's fine. Click select and then you can come in here and delete those. So if I was done with this, I could do as, as much editing as I want in there, moving crystals, adding crystals, whatever I want to do, I could do all of that. When I'm ready to go to the cutter, I'm going to select my whole design. I'm going to go to my cutter presets over here and I'm going to choose the type of material I'm cutting my template from. And there's two types. There's a smooth sort of rubbery feeling one and there's a flocked one. I use the flocked one and it tells you there um, what blade to put in, the depth of your blade, and the, this material is two pieces much like vinyl. It has the flocked part on top which is sticky back and then it has a backing on it. So you would set that down on your mat and it, it's going to cut and you want it to cut through just the flocked part. You don't want it to cut the backing. Then you can peel up your um, flocked part and put it on a piece of chipboard and use it from there. So let me show you what it will look like on your when you're looking at it in your cutter. I covered this in the last video um, but this is this orientation this is not the um, one I picked for the um, flocked material. This is actually the uh, graphic from when I was using vinyl. But this is the orientation of your cutter housing to in relationship to what's going to be cut. So I have it in the top left corner. So anywhere I put my material, um, I would want to put my the top left corner of the housing it would be right here so I would cut my piece right in this area. 
My piece might only fit this much of it, that's fine. So I can put it there. If I wanted to cut, maybe I wanted to use this one, I would put it at this corner of my piece and it would cut right, whoops, it would cut right here. What you want to remember is this here, this is the orientation of the cut, cutter housing, the, the laser light. You want to make sure it has, here I need four, almost five inches of space. So from here over, I would need five inches of space. From here to in front of my housing, I would need a little over four inches of space. So as long as I have that when I'm looking over here, I'm okay. And of course, I would use these here. They would be lit up if I was connected to my cutter. So I would use these to move the mat in and out and these to move the housing left and right. Now once I cut it, it's going to look like this. This is a piece of the flocked material with the little holes cut. I've already attached it to the chipboard. I use this little fancy foam brush to sweep my crystals in there. I just plop a pile of them on top. I sweep away. They fall in right side up, which is amazing. They fall in right side up. I'll then apply the transfer tape. I'll lay that over it and smooth it on top. Gently peel it up, making sure all the crystals are picked up. And then in this last picture here, I flipped it over to show you these are heat set or hot fix crystals. So they're all attached um, by the right side. When I flip this back down, I'm going to stick it onto whatever I'm going to adhere my crystals to and use either a press or my iron and I you can press right on the transfer tape but I always put a piece of um, a press cloth over the top of it if I need to and then I'll hold it for 10 to 15 seconds I let it cool for a little bit then I'll lift up the transfer tape carefully to see if my crystals are adhering if they're not I put the transfer tape back down apply some more heat and see how it looks from there now, here I just used an outline on my crystals. If I wanted to fill this, I could easily fill it. I have it selected here. I have fill selected here. I just need to select crystals and it fills my shape. Just like that. Isn't that pretty cool? It's pretty easy. Now, I, have, I could edit this too, just like I did the other one. I would wanna come over here and separate the crystals. But again, before I do that, because once you separate the crystals, they're all individual. So there's some things you can do that affects all of them all at once. It makes your editing a little bit easier. So in here, I can go to my fill and I can pick um, different fits. So there's shape fit, rectangular, looks like that. Um, I could come in here and pick circular, looks like that. Sometimes you get a really funky look to it and it's really cool. Contour gives me that kind of a look. All your shapes are going to require a different look. Um, I could make them into a single line which doesn't make sense here. Um, of course we're back to shape fit and line fit. So line fit is very odd too. Um, I really liked my either the rectangular or the shape fit. Now if I went with rectangular it did take away some of the pieces that were up on top and out here. And this is where I could come over and use my crystal shape. And if I wanted to put crystals right here, I could put crystals coming down for the needle. Or if I needed a couple up here, I could put some up here to be the um, thread stand if I needed to do that. So I have the option of doing of adding any of those things to it. I haven't even separated the crystals because all of these are fine. They're not on top of each other. There's no issues with these ones. And when I would send this to the cutter, I can come up here to, well, first of all, I wanna select it because I do wanna to go to my cutter presets and pick what I'm cutting. So I am cutting the flocked material. So I know I have my blue blade and it gives me that information there. And I can come up here to File, Export to Cutters. My edge is connect there. I'm going to connect. I'm not actually connected today. That's what it's going to look like when it cuts. And again, I would use my um, buttons here to move my mat in and out and left and right with the housing. So that should give you a 
quick start on doing some crystal, making crystal templates and playing in that area with the software. Remember, if you have any questions for me, my email is in down below here. You may contact me or if you have uh, software can questions, you can um, check with tech support. Their email is also there. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how you're doing.